Maybe we can start off by you just telling us so we can record it how you were related to Mike English. Or related to whom? Pardon? What, you want me to relate it to whom? Mick English. Mick. The Mick first. English. Oh, he, I, he was my grandfather. Your grandfather. Yeah, my mother's father. Came from Ireland in 44, he always said. And uh, landed in Nelson, and he had his mother with him, and his brother, James English, who lives up the reserve. In fact, you know where he lives. Well, he's not there now, of course. But uh, Miss Mary is there. She's his daughter. Lives in Homestead up there. And then there's Martin, who lives in Nelson. Martin English, who lives in Nelson. And as a big family, you must know some of the Englishes in Nelson, don't you? you must have gone to school. You must know them. Who's, who's in Nelson there, Lord? Uh, just Adrian. Just, oh, I know Adrian, but that's not the family I mean. No, but Martin is dead. They're all dead, Mother. Uh, uh, well, the Simpsons wouldn't be dead, well, would Adrian is there. Oh, yes. Bo well, Martin would be dead all right, but... Adrian is all. No, no, but there's another Martin. There's another Martin. Yes, well, that's uh, James. That other Martin was James's family. Oh, yeah. They were all the offspring of the same Englishes who came out. In forty-four, they came together. Their mother and I heard my uh, my grandfather tell the story that uh, two boys came home and told their mother they're going to America, and uh, she said, "Well, we're all going. We we'll say what we have. We're all going. I'm not going to be left behind." So I said she had some courage, hadn't she? Yeah. I'll say. What about her husband, like? Hmm? What about her husband, like? My uh, husband? No, Michael English is, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's father? Michael's father, yeah. Michael English, Michael English. Mother didn't know any of his father. Who's now, who is Michael English? He's your grandfather, Mother Mick. Oh! Oh, well, he came out himself. He was 18 years old when he came. He came, I, I'm not sure. Mother, I believe his mother did come with him, but uh, he was 18 and she was quite elderly. And then he has a, he has a, his brother settled around. For instance, James English settled up on the reserve. Maybe you know where Miss Mary lives up there, do you? Um, I'm not. She lives up the reserve there. I don't know. I don't think I could find the house myself, but she lives up there. And then there was Martin, who lived in Nelson. And uh, there were several others. There was a Mrs. Scully, didn't there? Two or three more. Mrs. Uh, Ferriker, who lives right over here, is my aunt and was the youngest of Mike English's family. Well, she doesn't live there now anymore because she's dead, but that was her home. Do you remember, like, any old stories that Mick used to tell you when you were about well, going to school, yes, and about, uh, about uh, having just a potato in his um, lunch can. He used to carry his lunch to school. And that's what they had, and they, they had a potato. And one day, one fellow had two potatoes. And he said to uh, my grandfather, would you like a potato? And he said, yes, he would. And he took the potato and ate it. And then the fellow, first thing they know, teacher noticed the fellow crying. And he said, what, um, what are you crying for? He said, Mickey English ate my potato. <laughs> and he said, well, I said, well, damn his eyes, he gave it to me. <laughs> Damn his eyes, he gave it to me. I think it was a girl that gave it to him. I don't think it was a boy, I think it was a girl. But we always thought that very funny, and he'd tell that over and over. Um, well, Mrs. McCarran, 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 she had told us that um, it was two girls who originally came out, Sarah and Anne. Yes, it was Sarah and... Uh, and uh, who, was the, who was the other one, Elsie? Anne, Anne was it? Maybe, I think so, Anne. yeah. One was Mrs. Scully, and the other was Mrs. Who. Didn't Sarah work as a housemaid for hmm. the creamers? Or did what? Canards. 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 Did Sarah work as a housemaid for I the I think canards? she did. I think they, any, oh, they, that was all there was to do. You know, they weren't trained for anything. They had no special education or, or uh, training in any way. And, but they could 
couldn't do housework, and did, you know. Do you, do you remember, did your grandfather ever tell you what boat they came over on? No, yeah, I, as far as I can remember now, I don't know that they, um, oh, he must have mentioned it, but I don't know. He had his mother with him, his mother, and uh, at least one brother, I don't know, he had the brother that lived up. I, I, I don't know, I think that it's, Maybe they didn't stay. Perhaps they just landed and took off for somewhere, for Canada. I don't know. Some of the Snowdens went to the West. What? Some of the family went to the West. Yeah. Yeah, likely. What about, like, did he ever, he, did he ever say anything that happened, like, on the way over? Any stories, like? Well, I can oh. don't remember anything. He was always telling stories about things that happened. Anything about the old country? Ireland? Oh. I told you about the potato we went took him for a lunch to school. Tell that should be enough. Tell them about him driving the cows, Mother. About the what? Driving the landowner's cows. No, I don't remember. You don't remember that story about him driving the landowner's cows to school? When he was going to school, he took the cows with him. He brought them home again in the evening. Went six miles. He yeah. one potato for lunch. Potato for lunch, yeah. Oh, my God. I remember about the potato for lunch. Because he said, Mick English ate my potato. And I said, damn his eyes, he gave it to me. <laughs> right to the teacher. <laughs> to the teacher. Oh, he had a lot of nerve anyway. <laughs> he didn't steal it or anything. No. About the farm, like, do you remember what it was like living on the farm with him? He must have been a hard worker. Oh, yes, they, but they worked right. Everybody worked, women and men and kids and everybody. Tell them what you had to do, Mother. What? Tell them the kind of work you did when you were a little girl. Oh, mostly pulling weeds or, uh, or uh, picking berries or... How about going for the cows? Oh, going for the cows. Cows used to roam, you know, in those days. And we always had to go hunt for them. That is, there were no fences. They just were turned out, you know. And they were a bell, and uh, my grandmother was st almost stone deaf. She couldn't, uh, she couldn't hear very well, and she wouldn't let me go alone after the cows to the woods. So she'd come with me, but uh, she she wasn't afraid to go any place or do anything. But I was fearful, you know. I didn't like to go too far from home, and uh, she'd say, "Now listen, and uh, if you see if you can hear the bell." And I'd listen, and if I, and if I didn't hear this bell, I'd say, no, Jerry, very cheerfully. But once in a while, I would hear the bell, and I'd think, well, that's an awful piece of way. And I'd just look blank and say, no. <laughs> she said, you do hear the bell. I know mother look at you. <laughs> so back I'd have to wait. I'd have to go to the, wherever the, and drive them home, get them milked. <laughs> She was, a, she was a great worker herself, and she wouldn't tolerate any, any slacking. How much knitting did you have to do? How much what? Knitting. Knitting? Oh, I had, had, a, I had knitting put in my hands as soon as I sat down. You know, they used to sell knit wool stockings, you know, and one thing or another. And they kept sheep and spun the wool, and all that was pioneer work, you know. And you had to knit a cup. You had to knit a cup for a sock every day, didn't you? Yeah, cups. When I before I could knit the bar, the the heel of the stock, and you know I wasn't quite that good. You, they used to put a white cuff on it, you know, like a, of that length. And uh, it, 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 the top was ribbed up to a certain part, you know. And my family didn't like very well to do that herself, so she wanted us to to uh, knit the cups. And then we'd pull the needles out and start another cuff, you know, and just leave it there. She'd pick the needle stitches up on another needles and a different color thread and finish the stocking, you see. So it always, if she found the basket with no cuffs in it, it was tough times for us. <laughs> Do you remember anything Michael, Mick, ever told you besides that, like the potato? 
Like, they must have... Oh, yes, he told me, he told me, he told me um, uh, about uh, being, well, having a meeting, they were, they were great Catholics, you know, and they met, he met a, had a Protestant friend in Ireland somewhere, and the fellow said, I'm going to go to church. He said, we're having a meeting of some kind or other, and I'm going to go to church. He said, well, we'll go to church with me, and then we'll go and do whatever they were going to do later, see? So I went along, he said, and he said, the minister got up to preach, and he said, he said a lot of things. He said that I wasn't paying much attention to, but he said that uh, all liars and fornicators, what a fornicators, whatever they were, and adulterers, and he, I don't know what all, would go to hell. And all Catholicity, he said. <laughs> and I said, uh, when we come out of the church, he says, I said, did you hear that bastard, what he said? <laughs> oh, dear, dear. about the minister. Did you hear that bastard, what he said? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> so they're very staunch Catholics, were they? Huh? Very staunch Catholics. Oh, very, very staunch Catholics. Catholics. Then, but <laughs> I just tell you, they were belligerent Catholics because somebody, uh, you, you get somebody to disagree with you, and you never know how strong your faith is until somebody questions it. <laughs> oh, my soul. <laughs> and this was over in Ireland, wasn't it? Yeah, that was over in Ireland, yeah. Oh, it was. Yeah. You see, the Protestant landlords came in and took over. When the Irish were conquered, the landlords took over the peasants' land and put them to work on it. It was better than going to prison, you know. So they put them to work on the land, and they had no more to say about anything. What did your grandmother think? What did your grandfather think of the landowners, Mother? Oh, he thought they were pretty tough. Some of them were good, I guess. He said that they used to raise a lot of cattle. And uh, it was the business of young teenage boys to drive their the cattle to market. See, they just had a big market and drive the cattle to market. So he was to go, he was to go along. And he said they always had uh, great eats. Uh, that is, according to the way they thought because they had half starved to death at home, you know. And uh, they, but they, they'd have pig's feet, and they'd do all the knuckles of pig's What I used to wonder was how that was such a great treat. Yes. He'd, tell, he'd tell them mild stories about pig's knuckles, how good they taste. They were salted, you know. They were salted and then boiled, you know. And when they'd go to the market, this is what they had to eat. And they'd eat so much, they'd be almost sick over it. The pig's Can you think of any of I never was much of a horse woman. I was a little bit afraid of them. Did they have sheep and chickens? Um, yes, they had all. Mother, tell them how your grandfather and grandmother used to talk to each other. Uh, tell your mother. She was deaf. She was very deaf. She was a very deaf. I think she said that she was in her early 30s when she began to go deaf. And you know those days they didn't go to a doctor or anything? You know, they... Uh, just more what they had. I don't, maybe there was no doctor, I don't know. But anyway, she didn't have anything done to her ears, and she got quite deaf when she was older. And he used to say, my grandfather would say, tell your, tell your mother, and he always called her your mother. She wasn't my mother, she was my grandmother. But he, he'd say, tell your mother this or that, and I'd tell her, and then she'd answer him. He could hear like a bird, everything. And, um, that's the way they had to carry on their conversation. We heard that... Um, so he couldn't make her hear. He couldn't, she couldn't tell a word he was saying. We had heard that the Englishers were great singers. Great what? Singers? My grandfather was a wonderful singer. But they, you know, they were poor begetters of like, as the fellow said. They left no singers behind them. They did. I don't think so. <laughs> Well, Joe was pretty good, you know. Yes, he is. Yeah. Did he used to sing a lot of Irish songs? Oh, yes. Yeah. 
was there any other stories about about uh, Ireland that would be worth accounting? Like well, the, the, the taverns, yeah. We talked about the taverns and the, the fist fights. Fish fights. Fist fights. Fist fights. <laughs> Was he a good fighter, Mother? What? Was Mick a good fighter? I don't think so, but he, he knew about good fighters there were. <laughs> he enjoyed them. Yeah. He, he wasn't a big man. He was all oh, medium height. And he wasn't a big man at all. What were the taverns like in Ireland? What did he uh, tell you about them? Oh, so they were just... Uh, straw straw hatched patched roofs and you know they didn't have they were they were just peasants you know they were just said the they lived on a landlord's estate and you didn't build your own house you took the house the landlord put up for you sometimes it was just a a, a, a lot of stakes and you know stakes drove ridden around and then a patched roof put on it and and then you got in there and you did as you like with the inside. Oh, I think that was hard. That's what made the people want to get out. It was so hopeless. You, you, um, the landlord expected they could have no money to pay rent, so he expected work for the rent. You know, he expected you to work in his carrot fields or his potato fields or his wherever he was. Girls and boys and everything got out and worked in the fields. And that was the rent, that's all the rent he got, they got. And the reason the peasants had potatoes is because there was every fellow you know very had well. inside his shack yeah. where he could grow mm -hmm. potatoes, but he didn't have a room to do anything else. Mm -hmm. So anxious to get out, mm -hmm. but they were very anxious to get to the new country. Did they know the potato famine was coming? Could they feel it? Oh, no, out? I don't think anybody knew. Because potatoes are only one season crop, and you don't know until you see them growing that's whether they're going to be good or... I don't think anybody knew. Why do you... Mother's, father, mother's grandfather was out before the famine. They were out before the famine. They came in 44, and I think it was in the late 40s the famine was. And he never sat down at the table without saying, thank God for a good potato. Yeah. <laughs> now, a long time, uh, you know, I wonder, I wonder how he'd always remember. Right. But thank God for a good it's potato. Nice. Right. Sure. You know, the potatoes grew lovely. They were used to be mealy and nice, you know. Thank God for a good potato. He married uh, a woman from here? He married a, a Murphy, Catherine Murphy. Who lived up, she was born up the road there. Um, was she born in this country, Mother? Yes. Yes, yeah, she was born here, yeah. She was born in this country. Was she also Irish, her family? No, Irish descent, yeah. She had a sister and a brother. She had one sister, was Mrs. Dunneher, and she had a brother, Ned Murphy. He went away to the States or somewhere and so, did the, lived the life out there and died of it. Never saw any of his descendants. Can you think of any other stories that she might have told you? Yeah, I'm just trying to think of them. Think of them after you're gone. Yeah. That's a long I know. I know her. I know her grandfather was a very colorful man, and that he was. Uh, they loved. Him. They really loved him. Yeah. yeah. For some unknown reason. He was, uh, I, think he was, uh, I think he was quite a character in the day, but he was God's story. Uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He had good stories to tell. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think but he was living. Well, they loved it, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So oh, where's most of the English family now? Like, this is um, just a medicine in the Well, I'll make English. Yeah. And we're all, everybody in Allen Bill, as you can see, every house top you can see, are descendants of Mick English. I mean, I, you couldn't count as descendants. You could. I don't know how many there are at all. Would you have any idea? No, no idea. And I would say that, uh, I just, and tell them, Mother, why were the English, why were Mick English's descendants all called shinnies? That was what? Why are we all called shinnies? 
phone call for? Shinnies. Skinnies. Skinnies. Skinny shinnies. They're shinnies. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, there's some kind of an Irish society, a rebel society or something. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people that weren't Irish cast it up to the Irish that were out here then. <laughs> shinnies, yeah. And I guess Nick was pretty active in the shinny society in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> when he got over here, they called him a shinny. And all of us are shitty. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're always called shitty. Just a little bit of the local color. Oh. Yeah. yeah, they were shitties. Yes, when they mentioned the English name, they said shitties. Yeah. And Mick was an avid shittier, I guess, in our... Yeah, yeah what's it followed him here? Was it uh, Kenny English who told us that, was it this family, something about the rebels they had? Or maybe it wasn't. The reason they left? Oh, uh, maybe not. Remember? No, the, uh, uh, the reason the Desmonds left, that's Mother's still yeah. side of Mother's yeah. family, was because they were rebels. Yes, but no, that has nothing to do with the English. The Desmonds were, uh, had, they had gone to school in Ireland. They were uh, apparently better off in Ireland than the English. <laughs> because they had, all, they had gone to school. And, and uh, my grandfather, uh, Desmond, was very well lived, well lived to, to the people around. He seemed very well educated. Now, I don't suppose he had any degrees or anything like that. But uh, he was always up on the news and interested in everything, you know, and reading books and papers. And In fact, my, my uh, father used to say he'd rather, he's old then, you know, getting old, and my father used to say he'd rather read than work. <laughs> and he'd want to do something, and he wouldn't. He want to read. So he, they got a chance to go to school. They were in a better locality or something. They belonged to Clark County. And then what a thing it must have been to come into a wilderness where there wasn't a school or a blessed thing and try to raise a family. It must have been hard. And I think the Irish, when they came over here, had factions that kind of were set against each other. Because mm -hmm. you, Mick English called Desmond's Corkers, and right. they called yes. him Shinny. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, were the, they were all divided right. with those factions. Oh, I think yeah. they like a good fight no matter how. There were the Corkies and the Shinnies and <laughs> things like that. <laughs> they brought the society. Because of, the I think they made themselves into factors, you know. They get into a row, and then one would call the other. They were awful people for quarreling among themselves, you know. And then they didn't want those factions to intermarry. For example, when mother's mother's mother wanted to marry her father, well, they nearly had fits because he was a corky and they were shinnies. Oh, <laughs> and then when mother wanted to marry daddy, there was another hullabaloo because mother was a shinny and daddy was something else. <laughs> 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 Isn't that really something? Yeah. Yes, so they were, they, Ireland must have been at that time divided into all these little societies. Yeah. If there were petty things, you know, nothing, to, uh, no major troubles or anything, you know, but just little petty things between families. Like I could quarrel with the Verdikers and have nothing to do with them or something, but, yeah, you know, that, that they were, they were nothing to worry about. They were just, and when people wanted to get married, they didn't care about the rest. Oh, they were terrible, awful, superstitious people, too, Mother. What? They they're awful superstitious. Yeah, they're superstitious, yeah. yeah. Tell some of the things that they believed. That Everything were. meant something. Everything that, um, they, were, they were afraid of goblins and ghosts. And they really believed in them. Oh, I think they did, yeah. They pretended they did anyway. Sure did. I always thought they used them to frighten kids. <laughs> The goblins will catch you if you don't watch out. Well, tell them how come. Tell them how come you came to live with the Englishes, mother. Well, I went. I came. I lived with my grandmother because my mother died, and see, I had one sister. And yeah, well, why did you go live with the Englishes? Do why? Don't you remember why you had to go and live with the Englishes? No. Because your mother was up here to everybody. Oh yes. So they said. But you know, the thing was, they didn't want me back. The thing was, it was all a made up thing I know, I knew, I knew later. My father was living back there, and he had his father with him. His father was still living. And then there were two little girls, and um, 
my, my sister was only nine months old. So my grandmother took her, and no protest was made. She took her, and she took care of her and everything. But I was left with the, with the two in there. So uh, then they, they didn't want me back there. That wasn't good for me, they thought. And they didn't want me back there, which they wanted me to go with my grandmother, too, where my sister was. So I think they invented all these stories about seeing my mother hither and yon. And all this she said, she wanted me out of that. You know, she wanted me to out where I'd be cared for. So last, finally, they, my, grand, my father gave up and, and I came out and lived You don't them. believe that they really believed those stories? Like she appeared here and she appeared there? You don't think they believed that? Yeah, they said that, but I never believed a word of it. I, I believed it. I think they believed it, too. I, they did. They I, believed Mr. Your Mr. Woods lived down here, down the road, and they said that he went to the barn one morning and he met her in the barnyard. Her ghost. The ghost. Her ghost. You know, he'd run a mile if he met what anyone. Did she tell him? <laughs> what did she tell him? She told him that she wanted me to tell the Englishes that she wanted me over there, it was, I'd be cared for, so. But you know, that was a makeup for sure. But Nick English went up and told them. Yeah. Oh, yes, he did. Nick Woods, I mean. He went up and told Nick and his wife that, he, that Sarah Susan had appeared to him. And my mother yeah. believed that. Yeah. And they believed it, I think. Yes, I think they, they thought they had to go get her right away. That was a sign from the nether world. <laughs> yeah. And they were terrible. I used, to, I used to go back in the holidays. Then I started to go to school. And I used to go back in the holidays. And I spent the greatest time. I was the cook and the mistress and the, you know, everything. I had the table set when my father would come in and he'd give me great praise. And my goodness, I love that. And I was the greatest housekeeper in those days. I suppose I was long about eight or nine or ten. <laughs> Could you tell us some about your grandfather, just about how you felt about him? And about the what? About your grandfather, how you felt about him? And oh, well, I thought he was great. I thought he was something. I thought he was a sort of a wizard of Oz. You know, he, he, he tells such stories, and, and uh, I, I thought he knew everything. You know, the people, just young kids, still. Do you like him, Mother? Oh, yes. Well, I must have been an awful nuisance, for I followed on his heels or everywhere. I remember one time he was building a stone wall, and he had a wheelbarrow with a wall, but he had. And there was a pile of stones in the field or something, and he undertook to move them over and make a stone wall out of them. So he was wheelbarrowing the stones over. And I was come, and I would come uh, along, and I'd want to put stones in the wheelbarrow. And, well, he'd want a certain kind of stones, you know. He, I wouldn't pick the stones that suit him. And, and uh, well, he used to have an awful time with me. As soon as he turned his back, I filled the wheelbarrow with something. I was willing to work, but I wasn't a good worker. You had the funniest, funniest oaths, like damn your eyes and things like that. Why, why they should damn your poor eyes, I don't know. <laughs> they never really swore, but he had a lot of stuff like that, he used to say. He's the plump that did this, damn his eyes. <laughs> 